Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a recent wolf commission, uh, so stay tuned. So first of all, I'm starting off with this black chrome acryl acrylic paint, and you can start off with any any acrylic paint, doesn't matter what it is, uh, it doesn't have to be exactly this one. So I'm going around the eyes, nose and mouth with uh, the black paint first off, and this is a resin cast of an original sculpture from myself. Um, I sculpted it out of Super Sculpey and then I moulded it in silicon and cast it in resin. So you don't have to be too neat here because I'm going to end up covering it in um, some of that faux fur anyway, so um, yeah, you don't have to be too meticulous about it. So the customer wanted a realistic wolf and I was given some reference photos to work from so um, it made it a pretty easy process. Alright, so first layer of the black paint down. I'll end up putting two or three layers of the black paint just to cover everything. So for the eyes I'm doing a mixture of um, this yellow chromacryl paint and this green um, metallic sort of paint by the company Jacquard um, and so it, it ended up being a nice lime green colour which is what I was going for but I wanted um, the metallic of the green in the actual eyes itself. So again a little bit of a fiddly process um, but the, what I usually do is I paint a black layer around the eyes first and then I will paint the iris and then I'll go over it again with the black paint just to um, refine the edges and cover up any, any slips or anything. So instead of mixing the paint itself, I decided to just mix it up in the eye so I couldn't be bothered mixing it in a trough. Um, so. I think it turned out really well and I wanted a sort of marbling effect but it ended up mixing in pretty well anyway. So I've just painted in the um, black in the eyes so it gives a bit of personality. Um, it is another fiddly process which just involves uh, kind of a dry brush technique where it's dabbing with a dry brush and then waiting for it to dry and then um, redoing again and again so it gets that layer effect. And just a little tip, if you want to feather out the edges of your paintwork again, just dab a brush in some water and wipe the water off until you've got a slightly damp brush and you can sort of cut into um, that paint that you want to feather out. Right, so I'm just going to finish off going over the nose and the mouth with that second layer of paint just to get that coverage again and make sure it doesn't chip off. And another thing I like to do with my dolls is I like to add in these two little white dots in the eyes. I just think it gives it a bit more character and it's kind of a you know, trademark of mine. Um, but I've seen a lot of other doll artists do things like that and um, you know, from Monster High and stuff, adding in little white dots into the eyes. And now we're going to paint up the feet and I'm using that same black chrome acrylic, acrylic paint from the beginning and um, just going in with this layer of paint covering the feet. Um, it's a bit messy but um, you don't need to be too meticulous about it again because I'll be covering it in fur. Uh, there's no right or wrong way of doing this and I'll end up doing a couple of layers of this just because it's more wear and tear area of the doll. I also like to cover the ends of the toes with more black paint because um, if anything shows through any of the fur that you put on, uh, it's, it gives it a nice black tone to it. And moving on to the fur that I'll be using, and as though it looks real, it's not. It's completely fake. Um, so I managed to snag this uh, fur that looks like a wolf's pelt and you know you don't actually need to use real fur there's absolutely no reason to so 
Uh, you can get really great quality furs that you couldn't even tell were, were, were fake. So really no reason to use real fur at all. So as you can see, I've drawn out my patterns on the fur. This will be the sides and the tail and the underbelly will be a white fabric. So um, the reason why I decided to do it this way instead of hand sewing it onto the actual body itself is because I find machine sewing to be a bit more stronger and durable and uh, won't risk the thread breaking when you're posing your doll. So I choose to do it this way. I know a lot of other artists choose to sew it. Um, there will be some hand sewing in the future, but um, I, majority I prefer to sew with the machine. And again, as you can see, I'm only cutting the backing of the fur, not the pile. Um, so as you can see, it has separated nicely where I have cut and I haven't bluntly cut the pile off which kind of renders it useless unless you're going to trim it heavily. So a good skill to learn um, you know you just insert the scissors in between the pile of the fur and you can just cut the backing. Um, I mean you can do this with the razor blade too but I don't really like that because it doesn't give you uh, a nice clean straight edge it kind of rips at the fabric um, so I just prefer to do it with a sharp pair of scissors. And I've tried a lot of different scissors and I prefer these little ones to, to cut the fabric because I have a little bit more control and the blade is a little bit smaller than bigger scissors and I just find bigger scissors get in the way and, and are a lot heavier. So um, yeah, you know, experiment with what you think is good and you'll find what you, you like. And here will be the underbelly, it's that white fur that uh, I was talking about before. And again, it's fake fur, so no animals were harmed. And you can see I've drawn out the, the pattern of the underbelly here. Um, so the white will go down the side of the legs as well. Okay, so once I've finished cutting out these pieces, I will then pin the pieces fur side together and I will run it through a sewing machine on a larger stitch. So using a larger stitch will let you pull any fur that's being pinned down by the, the thread out. And so here is the final piece before I have turned it inside out. And you can see that I have left the legs opened and the butt and the front of the head. So I can slip it through and with no problems continue on and hand sew the rest of it. Okay, so once my armature's in the body and the pieces are attached, now I prefer not to show this because it's something that I've spent a lot of time developing and I kind of want to encourage everyone else to come up with their own signature way of doing things and it gives your, your pieces your own style and your own look and sense of achievement. Um, so moving on to sewing up the legs and I'm using a ladder stitch to sew up these two legs and the back end. And it just really involves going in and out through both sides of the fabric pieces. And it's a blind stitch, so you won't see any pieces um, showing. Uh, and it's also a great thing that you're using faux fur because it sort of hides a lot of um, threads and stuff. So if you're not very good at sewing and you want to learn, um, fur is a great way to, to uh, start. Alright, so once we've sewn up that, I'm going to glue the faux fabric to the resin piece using this tacky fabric glue. Uh, you can use any sort of fabric glue or even E6000, that would work great. Um, just, yeah, I don't really like using super glue because it doesn't really do it for me. Um, I just find fabric glue is a bit easy to work with and it sticks really well. 
Moving on to the second leg and the same deal as the first leg, using that ladder stitch from both sides of the fabric to sew it up. Um, I usually end up tying knots halfway through uh, my stitches just in case any thread breaks. I have a backup that is tied together. So once I've sewn all this up, I'll um, stuff the doll with polyfill and it's just the same things that you can find in your cushions, nothing special. Um, and then I'll just sew it all up, trim it where it needs to be trimmed and I'll fur the face. Um, now the furring the face, I haven't decided if I'm going to put a tutorial out for that or not. I'm leaning towards no for the same reason as I said about the armature before. But just experiment with what you can do and you'll come up with your own certain style. Right, so here's the final piece. I think it turned out really well. I'm pretty happy with it. And that is it from me today, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and leave your any requests in the comments down below. Um, it would really help if you could share and like and comment as well. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. And you can check out my Etsy store. It's in the link in the description. So I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!